Beyonce's new song is breaking the internet. My manager called and said that Beyonce wanted to use one of your songs. I'm like, holy crap, what is going on? Another one? And Britney is getting ready to tell everybody the tea in her autobiography. Plus, Kim K on her kids meeting Pete and why she won't be walking down the aisle anytime soon. I think I'm definitely gonna be really cautious because I, you know, have proven that maybe I'm not the best at it. And could the God of Thunder be ready to hang up his hammer? Now, is it safe to assume that this will be your final go around as Thor? Uh, look, yeah, it might be, I don't know. ET's The Download starts right now. All right, y'all, it is time to put your dancing shoes on. We begin with Beyonce, who's shaking up the world with her new summer anthem, Break My Soul. You won't 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 break my soul. Oh, it's already on heavy rotation. Don't you worry about that. But in true Beyonce fashion, she surprised the Beehive, releasing the song last night, hours earlier than we expected. Queen Bee's bringing back 90s house music with this track, which features New Orleans bounce music legend Big Frida. E.T. spoke with her about the life-changing moment and working with Beyonce for a second time, but this time in the studio with her. Release your mind. Release your job. Release the time. I needed an asthma pump once I left out of the building. My manager, you know, called and said that Beyonce wanted to use one of your songs on her new album. I'm like, holy crap, what is going on? Another one. Last night, I mean, when I heard it, I just was like in tears, you know, grateful, you know, still trying to pinch myself to wake up. Frida first appeared on B's 2016 hit song, Formation, off her Lemonade album. I came to slay, bitch! And we're getting huge reaction to Beyonce's new song. Her Destiny's Child bandmate Kelly Rowland celebrated this morning, dancing with her one-year-old son. B's mom posted our interview with her, saying, Break My Soul is my summer anthem right now. This song makes me dance like it's no tomorrow. I just posted recently that I really miss her singing, and I do. Cynthia Arrivo shared this video of her dance session last night, and Titus Burgess, well, he was in tears. <laughs> and you will break my soul. You are. Oh, God. He also posted this video of his sleepless night saying, never has the repeat button ever gotten more love and use. And you know, Titus, of course, is an official member of the Beehive. Rem remember, he once recreated one of her music videos. Something don't taste right, cause it ain't right. Like when you take a sip of water and it turns out to be Sprite. I know your secret, and now I regret. Demi, I, uh, I saw your reaction. You did? I did. <laughs> By the way, I was supposed to be at a dinner 20 minutes from there. Was very late, but you know what people understand, okay? It's Beyonce, all right? Everybody gets it. By the way, Twitter is so undefeated, y'all. Some are calling B's new track an ode to workplace liberation and say it's time to say bye-bye to the nine to five. One Twitter user asking, is she telling us to quit our jobs? Because I will, Beyonce, I will. Another tweeting, Beyonce said the great resignation starts today. Release your job. Break My Soul is the first single off Beyonce's upcoming album, Renaissance, which drops July 29th. Is she going to be picking up people's bills when they quit their jobs? Uh, we'll find out. She better. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm coming back. Because while Beyonce is bearing her soul, Britney Spears is ready to share her story in a new tell-all. A source tells ET, Brit is working on a book about everything she went through. Our source says, the book is going deep. She is sharing all details and not holding anything back. Now, Forbes has reported that the book deal is worth $15 million. Meanwhile, E.T.'s source also says Britney and new husband, Sam Ascari, are not going on a honeymoon just yet, saying they are just enjoying this moment together. Now, it's been nearly two weeks since Britney and Sam's star-studded wedding, but if you're wondering what Madonna gave her as a gift, well, it was jewelry. Our source says Britney was so thrilled to have her there to celebrate along with her other friends. Right. Moving on, Kim Kardashian is also dishing on love and lessons learned in a revealing interview with Today. We know Kim and boyfriend Pete Davidson are closer than ever, but are wedding bells in her future? 
I think I'm definitely going to be really cautious mm -hmm. because I, you know, have proven that maybe I'm not the best at it and I don't want to make that mistake again. Kim also cautions when it comes to family, saying she waited six months to introduce her four kids to Pete. I have a sister that has been through it mm -hmm. all and we talked about it and I consulted with a few therapists and friends that have been yeah. through it. And I think it's different for everyone and different things work for different people, but you just have to do what feels right. The reality star getting candid about co-parenting and coming together with ex Kanye West. The kids, you know, spent the day with him and then we had a big Father's Day dinner. Of course, I wanted to honor and respect the amazing people and fathers, men in, in my life that have raised me and are raising my children. So every everything's going good. As for her infamous Met Gala moment and the internet drama that followed, Kim says she only wore the dress for four minutes after losing 16 pounds to fit into the iconic gown. I looked at it like a role and I really mm -hmm. wanted to wear this dress. <laughs> like I, it, it was really important to me. And um, you know, it actually taught me a lot about my lifestyle and my mm. health. And since then afterwards, I continued to eat really healthy. I mean, I'm down 21 pounds wow. now and I just completely changed my lifestyle. It looks like Kim might be playing matchmaker for her sister. Just days after Chloe shut down rumors she was dating another NBA player, a source tells ET she's dating a private equity investor she met through Kim, and things are going well. Now, more evidence the good American mogul is moving on. She shared this Instagram story about healing. Also bouncing back after breakups, the exes of Kardashian exes. Julia Fox and Amelia Gray Hamlin shared more than just their Kardashian connection over the weekend. The former flames of Kanye West and Scott Disick both donning bleach blonde eyebrows and touch tongues in a new Instagram pic shared by Amelia of what appeared to be a pretty wild night out. The model has a lot to celebrate. She just marked her milestone 21st birthday last week. Uh, guys, Graham Norton is a late night staple in the UK, but is he eyeing James Corden's late, late show gig in America? ET was with the Graham Norton show host in London to celebrate Paramount Plus coming to the UK. But he admitted he's not exactly looking to fill Corden's seat when he leaves the late, late show next spring. I mean, I love going to America, but working there, particularly a job like that, you know, that is, that's a job. You know, I don't do a job. I have a lovely time. I do a once a week show. Where is that? That's like joining the priesthood to do that show five nights a week. That's proper graft. And I don't know how he's done it for as long as he has. Well done to him. Well, on to a couple who is also working hard, Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. Yeah, they stay, star together in Paramount Plus's Yellowstone spinoff, 1883. And E.T.'s Cassie Delora caught up with the two about another major work milestone. It's your love. Just does something to me. This year marks 25 years since your first duet. What do you remember about that song? It's your love. Girl, I was so pregnant. <laughs> Faith was craving milkshakes when we were shooting the well, video. I, mean, what, I, I craved a lot, but, but the milkshake but, I needed at that time. And she had a milkshake when we were when we were shooting the video. And and so she if you look really closely in a few shots, you'll see a milkshake stain. No, they took that out, babe. <laughs> oh, you can still out. see it. You can still see it. Tim, dapper in a suit, and Faith, wearing a lace corset under her jacket, hit the blue carpet alongside fellow Paramount Plus stars, including Kevin Costner. He's in the middle of shooting season five of Yellowstone. How does shooting this season compare to the four prior. It, it, it's, it's really good to be out there. I mean, honestly, it's, it's, it's hard to get tired of those mountains and rivers and horses and, and things like that. So take this, body this upcoming season, which premieres November 13th, is supersized. There's 14 episodes instead of 10. If it doesn't surprise you, it's very unlikely that it will surprise an audience. Helen Mirren and Harrison Ford join Taylor Sheridan's Yellowstone universe. They'll play another generation of Duttons in the prequel 1923. Are you in touch with Harrison and Helen about the universe now? No, no, I'm not in the advice business. <laughs> Is your beautiful wife here tonight? She's not. She's not. You know, we have four kids. She's missing Kevin Costner tonight. She is missing Kevin Costner. She's such a huge fan of Yellowstone. So, um, so yeah, she'll be freaking out over the fact that she's not here. David Oyelowo stars in the spin-off, 1883, The Bass Reeves Story, about the legend of the Lone Ranger, while Sylvester Stallone plays a gangster in Tulsa King, and he's loving the fashion. I go from the shoes up. I'm not messing around. Because I think a lot of these, for some reason, 
The gangsters may not have been the most erudite, educated human beings, but they dressed well. And I guess they knew they weren't going to be real long. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have to do to get a reality show from you? Uh, why don't you bring that up? I'm doing one. I thought, you know, I live a really a life, a weird life, funny life, because our daughters. So it's going to go down August. All right, speaking of reality, what's better than one former housewife returning to TV? Try having eight come back. Yeah, and bringing a ton of drama on The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip Ex-Wives Club with the OG of Orange County, Vickle, Vicky Gunvalson, leading the pack. And she's got a new man named Michael after ending her two-year engagement to politician Steve Lodge. There isn't very many people that don't want to be in a relationship that I know of. All my family is married or in a relationship. All my friends are married and in a relationship. It's a couple's world out there. She'll need all the love she can get to help deal with another OG, New York's Dorinda Medley. She hosts all the ladies at her estate, Bluestone Manor, and the claws immediately come out. Birds of a feather flock together. I am not flocking with that bird. I think she's mean. We filmed with her for a week, and it was awful. She made everybody in the place cry, but I think Eva Pedro cried. I mean, everybody cried. Wait, and their feud gets even nastier off camera. Vicky's giving E.T. the detail on their text fight. Vicky says, no, leave me don't. out of your press. You have zero knowledge of who I am, OK? I own four houses, my own business for 32 years, and no one gifted me anything. Go away. Go away. The cast also includes Taylor Armstrong, Brandi Glanville, Jill Zarin, Eva Marcel and Phaedra Parks when it premieres June 23rd on Peacock. Now on to more drama, only this time in the middle of the woods. Mm -hmm. Running Wild with Bear Grylls is back with a slew of A-listers, including Natalie Portman, Simu Liu, Ashton Kutcher, Florence Pugh, and Anthony Anderson. Yeah, here's a preview. This season, we're taking it up a level. I'm teaching my celebrity guests survival skills. Your life will depend on it. Then they need to face the wild alone. Bear! And failure is not an option. I'm sure if he's asking me to do it, I can do it, right? All of a sudden, he's gone. He doesn't even cook your breakfast or anything. Everything's lethal out here. There's no turning back. Oh, God! Oh! Who talked me into this? <laughs> Check it out. July 25th on National Geographic. Well, listen, a group who could have benefited from some Bear Grylls survival skills, mm -hmm. the cast of Yellow Jackets. Yeah, Cassie caught up with the stars Melanie Linsky and Tawny Cypress and tried to, her best to get some season two scoop. Said, when do you start shooting the next season? August. I yes, think. mid August. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know, excited. Going back to well, Vancouver. I love working with Melanie. I think we work really well together. So it'll be really fun to um, do more scenes together. Uh, hopefully, have those intimate moments where we get to break down our walls. You guys are like, we're not telling anything. We're that was a great one. Yes! <laughs> that was good. That was a good job. And the so giant good. squid. I'm really looking forward to the giant squid. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to when we murder the squid. Yes, this, the murdering yeah, the squid's going to be a, a real thrill. <laughs> Giant squid. Right, while we're talking <laughs> edge of our seats TV, we've got to talk Stranger Things. One of your favorites, our favorites, really. Netflix says the supersized final episode will have a runtime of, get this, two hours and 20 minutes. Volume 2 drops July 1st, and by the look of the just-released trailer, it is going to be one intense ending. <laughs> I have this terrible feeling. It might not work out for us this time. It is over. Now I just want you to watch. And by now, you recognize the music in the trailer as Kate Bush is running up the hill. Because of the show, Kate's song hit number one on the singles chart, and she put out a statement on her website saying, I salute the Duffer brothers for their courage. I want to thank them so much for bringing the song into so many people's lives. I'm overwhelmed by the scale of affection and support the song is receiving. I have to admit, I feel really moved by it all. Thank you so much for making the song a number one in such an unexpected way. Now, this makes Kate the oldest woman to top the singles chart, unseating Cher, who congratulated her via tweet saying, we had to fight our way through the testosterone Strong curtain, and we did it so the girls who came after us could sing as long as they want to with mega respect. 
So fans are going to be feeling the love mm -hmm. with Thor when he returns to the big screen July 8th. E.T.'s Cassie Delora spoke with the god of thunder himself about his future with the franchise. And flick. Oh. You flick too hard, damn it! Now, is it safe to assume that this will be your final go around as Thor? Look, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Each time I've done it, I've sort of thought, okay, I don't know what else I could say as this character, and thanks for having me, and great. And then something else has come up. Look, I'm open to anything, you know. If I'm lucky enough to do more, then great. If not, it's fantastic, you know. I'm thankful either way. The first time Chris wielded the hammer was 11 years ago. Now he's back for his ninth movie in the Marvel Universe, Thor Love and Thunder, in theaters July 8th. Natalie Portman returns to the franchise as his former flame and the new Thor. Jane? Together, they must defeat a new villain, played by Christian Bale. So this is my vow. All gods will die. This is my first bad guy. You never forget your first. And I think it's the most insane thing I've been a part of. Uh, it's wacky, it's wild, it's fun. We now have a, a beautiful love story at the center of it. What's it been like? Three, four years? <laughs> Eight years, seven months and six days, give or take. That girl looks ripped. Were you two gym buddies? We were a bit, yeah, yeah, she, <laughs> she worked hard. I just wanna say that was very, very impressive what you did back there. She lifted a lot more weights on this one to sort of sculpt her muscles. And Tessa Thompson in the gym with us a lot too. We had a big ice bath there, which we'd rotate through, and, and that was that became the kind of that, that, the most noise was made in that thing. She came in first day and did three, oh. three and a half minutes, and <laughs> so then we all had to try and do three minutes. Do you have a moment that you remember the magnitude of what was happening in your life? The, the first time we went to Comic Con and we showed the trailer, I mean, my publicist said. Do you have any idea what just happened or what, what this means? And, and I sort of understood due to the, the you know, thousands of people were screaming and, and we get, had given us the tick of approval. Sitting on the stage just then and like thousands of people like was sort of mind blowing. Eight, nine years later on the Avengers Infinity War and Endgame press tours, that was really the culmination of all of the Marvel films, the whole universe coming together. And I think we all realized and recognized at that point that it's probably never going to be done again. And I have such beautiful, nostalgic memories about that moment. Now, you posted that your kids are only allowed to dress <laughs> as Thor. In now, jest. You've got some serious power in those. Are they unfazed by your Marvel fame? It's just normal for them, you know? I mean, they come on set and they get excited for a couple of minutes, and then they realize it's a pretty boring process. Um, mm -hmm. But no, I let them wear whatever they want. In fact, I think Wonder Woman's their favorite character. It's definitely my boy's favorite character. What's left on the bucket list? I, I just want to be home now with the kids and, and just, just hang out and do the usual sort of school drop-off pickup, you know, weekends and sports and all the sort of fun stuff that, uh, that the, kid, the kids are involved in at the moment. Someone who can check off become an internet star off their bucket list, Miles Teller. Yeah, still ahead, we take a look back at the actor's career and what has everyone so mad about Miles? What a time to be alive. ET's The Download will be right back. One of the summer's biggest movies has also given us the summer of Miles Teller. <laughs> yeah, it seems like Rooster and his epic mustache are all over the internet. Right. But as Nichelle Turner shows us, E.T. has had its eye on Miles long before he took flight in Top Gun Maverick. What a time to be alive. I was in my underwear eating breakfast at you know 1 p.m. today. You forget that, that this is the kind of fandom that attracts these, these people. I'm a great drinking buddy. I've gotten more than one movie just off of like, drinking at a bar. I just want to do the roles that you know that satisfy me, and if and if that also appeases you know the audience, then then we're we're in it together. Yeah, at 35, Miles is having a moment. Maybe it's the stash or that pilot swag, but his blink and you missed it shirtless scene in Top Gun Maverick has the internet captivated. How does this? I'll make a cup of coffee. Turn it to this. I showed up as 
in shape as I cook. I've never had more oil on me. Running Miles' biggest fan club, wife Kelly, who has no shame posting thirst traps of her husband, which are now dubbed Teller Talk. I don't have, you know, uh, Instagram or, or TikTok or anything, but I know my I know my wife, I'll just see her on her phone and then she'll start cracking up. I've never really experienced something like this in my life. Some Top Gun secrets? Miles didn't know the cameras were rolling when he did the now iconic shimmy, and he really played the piano in this nod to the original. Goodness gracious, red balls of fire. It's a pretty tricky song, but luckily I played piano when I was younger, so I just had to dust it off a little bit. As for the mustache, it was Miles' idea. Tom was on board, but Kelly was not. I felt different, people looked at me different. You know, I kind of felt like a cowboy or something. Did you? Oh yeah, man. Started walking, just you know, more confident, it was great. Tom, I don't think he even had any idea. And then when we did our first camera test together, he hadn't seen me for a while, and so I had it for then, and he was really excited about it. She wanted me to shave it, that's why it's, that's why it's never made a comeback. Go <laughs> have fun. When we first met a 24-year-old Miles in 2011, he was in the remake of Footloose and told us this. It's my secret weapon. And I actually, you know, it's hard to, to act like you can dance when you know that you can. After college, Miles landed his first major off. movie role alongside Nicole Kidman in the 2010 film Rabbit Hole. He earned just $5,000. When I kind of was first getting roles, did I think that you had to look like an Abercrombie and Fitch model apparently to get a lead? Yeah, I did think that. And I knew that wasn't my, you know, that wasn't my forte. And if that's how Hollywood worked, then, then I would have a, a difficult time getting the lead role. These are drummer thumbs, by the way. That's what my mom told me that when I first started drumming. She's like, oh yeah, those are your grandfather's drumming thumbs. I'm like, no, they're not. They're just fat thumbs that I'm using to drum. Miles actually played the drums and gained critical acclaim in 2014's Oscar-winning film, Whiplash. His paycheck, $8,000. And did you know Miles was actually supposed to play Ryan Gosling's role in La La Land, but says he was later told he was no longer creatively right for the project. This was like the most physical role that I had done. I, I was actively, you know, kind of looking for something that was a little more, you know, juiced up, a little more pumped up. From the Divergent series to Fantastic Four, Miles proved his medal as an action star. In 2016, he dropped 20 pounds and had 6% body fat to play a boxer in the true story, Bleed for This. 140 pounds even. Yeah! It was a long day. That last fight scene was like 16 hours, and they brought in all these pizzas, and somebody handed me a pizza. I could have cried, yeah. Like, I woke up the next morning with the pizza box next to me in bed. Sergeant Schumann. Is there something in you that connects to these type of movies to celebrate our heroes? I grew up in a pretty small town. A lot of my boys are military. And yeah, I don't think there's enough of these films being made. And with these two stories, I just really felt for the guys that I was playing. Some other things you may not know about Miles, he actually plays four instruments total, piano, drums, guitar, and saxophone. He once sang and danced on stage with Keith Urban. I'm talking about my and He's very sarcastic. My biceps would be taking up the whole room, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a lot of hot guys in this movie. I heard Miles Teller's in this movie. Apparently he's really hot. I think it's all downhill from here, so. Still, when it comes to the two favorite ladies in his life, his mom and his wife, Miles is seriously devoted. My mom is a wonderfully strong, powerful, intelligent, you know, smart, beautiful woman, and she ran my household. I love making movies, but my, you know, my personal life and my time with Kelly and you know and my family and my friends, those those are the moments I really, you know, I really savor. I've been lucky. She's she's always been my support and my but yeah, she's she's happy when she gets me back for sure. You bring your wife? Did I not mention her? And we'll edit that. And I started with my wife. Of course I brought my wife. She's my forever plus one, baby. I like that. Guy. I love him. Come I'm on. obsessed. All right, guys. I'm on the mouse train. For us today. Yeah, that's right. Tune in tomorrow for another episode of ET's the Download. <laughs> Bye.